The Sci Fora Film Podcast. Hello and welcome to the uh, Sci-Fi Film Podcast. This is part two of our Halloween presentation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Our Halloween presentations. Uh, and uh, if you, I hope you enjoyed last week's and you watched uh, some of the films that we suggested. Uh, this week we have again two short horror Short horror films and a long horror film. Um, that I don't know. Well, I have te- with me, I'm Andy Walker, and I have with me again my son Scott. Hello, Scott. Hello there. Just think you technically the fake to we've watched is it? Te- I know it's technically a fake to because that's what it's put out as, but is it still technically a fake to live for his class as an anthology? Well, yeah, it's a te- it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a feature length film made up of short. Bits. Kind of, sort of. It's just because it, it was something I thought about earlier. I was looking at it. It's like it's class, he classes itself as an anthology. <laughs> yeah. With the, the thing with that one, though, is the fact that all of them are about the same kind of yeah. thing. Whereas uh, there are some anthology films where they are literally just short films stuck together by yeah. nothing in particular. Um, th- th- this has an overarching story, a bit like the. Um, the Archers. one, the one we watched on the train, which I can't remember the name of, all of a sudden. The one we watched on the train. Yeah, the well, we didn't watch it on the train. Oh, okay. It, it was set on a train with with uh, Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee and Doctor Terrace House of Horrors. <laughs> I'm the sure they would love to know that you to describe one of their best films as that film on the train. <laughs> You know, it's like, do you remember Master and Commander? Yeah. Right? yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a film about some blokes on a boat. Um, <laughs> about what it's like to be. Anyway, right, so let's get on with things, shall we? Um, right, the first film is a short film from 2021. And it is a film called Trick or Treat. Uh, written Not to be mistaken in... with the film from last week. Yes, not to be mistaken for the feature length film that we watched last week. Um, this was written and directed by Wesley Mellett, uh, the director of photography. Uh, <laughs> director of photography exactly. Was Adam, I can't remember, I'm carrying my own writing. Adam Hrybar, uh special effects makeup by Isabel Izel. Mm. Uh, the cast is Shelby Hightower, Eric Francis Malarag- mm. Malaragni. I knew that one was going to trip me up. Uh, <laughs> Andrew Glesner, Rob Cocagna, Gavin Christ, Logan Christ, Steve Christ, and Rebecca Christ. Uh, the synopsis for this film says. During their first Halloween in their new home, Travis and Beth encounter an unexpected trick or treater. So, what do you think? I'm a big fan of horror films anyway, especially Halloween horror films. But I really, really, really like this film. It is so well done, and I just. I think it's amazing. I just, I just, I think it's just. I love the the mask as well that the guy wears. Um, I just, I, I think it's just amazing the fact that like it's just so well done. The sh- the camera angles, the sounds, the the effects, everything. It's just so um, just so well done. 
Yeah, it, it's really weird. I, I mean, I really love it. I think it's great. It, it's got a good look. It's well acted. The effects are great and, and all that sort of thing. The, the mask, as you say, is brilliant. It's really weird because there are a few times where you kind of think, oh, this is, this is dragging a bit. Mm. It's, uh, and you just start thinking that. And then something happens and you kind of go, oh, no, it's not. Oh, OK. Yeah. Right, it's, it's almost like it's sort of it's been tested, like they've tested it to sort of get to the point where you can see someone's interest fading. If I'm going to throw something in now. Yeah. And it's just, but it's just, it's just, it's just so well done. And it's it's such a great film. And what I like about it is the fact that it is, it's not over the top. It's not like, it's like in your face with a lot of the stuff. It's... it's subtle bits in it and there's yeah. things about it and i just i love the ending as well i think i'm so that's just so cool yeah it's actually really good it's a it's a really really good film i just i don't know i've never never seen anything by these people before but i'd love no. to see some more stuff more stuff by them because it just, yeah um, it's got a great look it, it's really well done i love it and i would suggest anybody out there watches it because it's really good good fun to watch uh, that's the other thing is it's got a little bit of humour in it in places, mm. which I wasn't quite expecting, but it's quite it's quite good. Um, but it's it's good, yeah. I like that. Okay, so our second film is called Happy Halloween, not to be mistaken for the short film that we did last week that was called Happy Halloween. This is from twenty twenty. This is made by Social House Films, uh, directed and edited by. Aaron Fradkin, our old friend Aaron Fradkin. Um, cast is uh, Victoria Fratz, Madison Reynolds, Cam Hoskins, and Yasina Dunn. And the music, of course, is done by the fantastically named Robot Disco Puma. I so, I, you know what? I have any film we watch just purely for the fact that it, it's just their sound in it. And it could be awful just for the fact that I just like the fact that. That's what the sound company is called. Yes, absolutely. That's just... <laughs> Robot Disco is brilliant. And the synopsis for this, are, unlike most of their other films, which just says what's in the other room, <laughs> the synopsis for this film says, no, seriously, prick or treat. Yeah, I've got, I've got to admit, I was expecting now when I read the synopsis for it just to say what's outside. Or yeah. something like just the way they've done it for every other time. Like, it's got to be something like that. Absolutely. Well, <laughs> all I can say, as usual, Social House Films and Aaron Fredkin have delivered a really simple idea in a really good way. Yeah, I, I've got to admit, like like we said before, I, it's almost getting to the point now. It's the same with, with like Deformed Lunchbox and a few other ones we've, we've hyped up so much. I'm, I'm, it's almost getting to the point now where I'm almost upset they haven't made a bad film. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I really want them to. I really want them to make like one the bomb so we can sit there and go. Oh, they are human. They do make a mistake because so far they just every film we've watched today is just it seems to impress so much. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it it, it works really, really well. Yeah. But I I just it was just really great to watch it. It is, it is a simple idea and it's a really quick film. And mm. it works just so well. Like all of their stuff, it's it's a great, simple idea, done quickly and done well. And it's it's really great. I love it. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. It's, the, the fact is, like, it's simple ideas. It's, it's things with hot, Halloween films. There's, there's, it's almost getting to the point where there's not an original idea out there. Yeah. Halloween. And these, again, it's not an original idea, but they've made it their own massively. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. I love it. It's uh, yeah, as you say, there's not a lot different you can do no. for Halloween, but this this it's really well done and it works really really well. Yeah, uh, so I loved it. I loved it. Okay, now on to our feature film. Now our feature film this week is the uh, 2013 film All Hallows Eve. Yeah, um, and uh, very the, the very best of this because it starts off massive, quite a very 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 gruesome franchise absolutely i mean this, this was the first feature film uh to feature uh artie the clown um, artie the demonic killer clown th there'd already been a short film uh which was the original terror terrifier film yeah. 
just a short film. I think that was 2011, something like that. But then they made this one, All Hallows Eve, uh, written and directed by um, Damien Leone. Uh, did some shorts in 2000, 2010s. He then did the Frankenstein versus the Mummy in 2015, Terrifier in 2016, and Terrifier 2 in 2022, which has literally only just come out. So yeah, it's literally, I think it came out in August. I can't wait to see it, to be honest. Oh, really. it's from what I've seen of it, from it's been hyped up so much the way in one of these films that it's no one can finish watching it. Yeah. It's that sort of that sort of movie where people go, I can't do this. It's it, it done me. Yeah. <laughs> but so Damien the only wrote and directed all of these films, which it, it, it worries me what sort of brain that guy's got. <laughs> the, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the cast, uh, we've got Katie Maguire, uh, who did some shorts and TV stuff in 2000, 2010s. She was in Touch in 2007, which was straight to video. Uh, Red Canyon in 2008. Infected Survivors in 2015, which also went straight to video. And then she was also in Terrifier in 2016 and Terrifier 2 in 2022. Uh, we've got Catherine, there's a lot here that didn't really do much of this. Catherine Callahan, who's been in nothing of any interest to us other, other than this. Um, Marie Mesa, who did some uh, shorts in, in uh, the 2010s, and she was in the original short film of Terrifier in 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, then we got uh, Kayla Leanne, who did some shorts and TV stuff in 2000, 2010s. Mike Gianelli, who did some shorts in 2000, 2010s. Uh, Sydney Freehofer, who did some shorts in the 2010s. Uh, Carl Mathewson, who did nothing. Uh, and then uh, we have Michael Chamel, who did some shorts and TV work in the 2010s. Uh, he was in New Guy in 2003. Frankenstein versus the Mummy in 2015 and Infected Survivors in 2015, which went straight to video. Now, interestingly, the guy who plays Artie in this does not play him in the Terrifier films. No. It's a different it's, actor. It's, yeah, it's, it, it's, a, it's actually really annoying because I really like him in this as Artie. Yeah. He, he, and but it's not it's not taken away from the guys that play the guy that plays him in like the second or third film because it's just playing this clown well to be honest playing any horror sort of horror person in it like the killer is not an easy thing to do anyway because you get punished with being this evil person yeah but they all do it so well <laughs> so uh the synopsis for this film is a babysitter finds a VHS tape which features various sinister murders performed by a psychotic clown. Mm. Yeah. So as you say, this is an anthology film uh, and the stories are connected by the character of the clown, Artie. Yeah, and the, it's sort of connected by Artie and the babysitter. Yeah. But I mean, that's the overarching thing is the yeah. babysitter and that, but the, the, the short Bits are connected by by RT. I love this film. I think it's brilliant. <laughs> I think the, it's... the thing is, as well, I would say is the fact that one of the reasons I'm not, I've argued this so much with so many people, and to the point where I've almost I've almost lost hours of my life doing this. <laughs> but the thing is, if you if you think about it, it's the fact that everyone says Artie the Cloud was this massive killer. Yeah. There's only really one one of the anthology films that you actually see him kill someone. Yeah, true. And it's but, the thing is, this is what I like is the fact that he's obviously this terrified. He's the one that instigates everything and stuff like that. And I get, yeah. But it's the fact that it's the way that he does things and the way that and the way that any of them and right, like you said, the writers have done this. It is so well done that it makes you sit there and go, "It is him." Everything is him. Yeah, yeah. And then it's only when you sort of pick it apart. Like, actually, the first one, yeah, okay, he chose the girl. That's it. He didn't do anything else. Yeah. And even with, like, the other bits, it, it, like, the sort of the, the woman with the painting, 
All yeah. it is is a painting of him. He's not actually in the film. He's no. not actually in that one. It's just a painting of him. And I think it's just so well done, the fact that he's sort of, he's the instigator of everything. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what I love about the film. I think the thing I like about it, I, I, I like, I like that it's, it's kind of a mix of, of genres almost, because you get the, they get the intense atmosphere with the with the kind of like sudden shocks and things and things happening, and then you've got the real kind of slasher element. Yeah, and it's it's really odd to have that mix of the two things together. It works well, so it's, well. Well, it's the thing is, if you think like, even with this film, like the other terrorizing terrorizing films that are, are all about the same sort of thing, thing, but like this one, as being an anthology one, you've got the mix of different. Like things so you've got like the first one which is obviously like almost like you sort of get you get that sort of, the sort of kidnapping feel and the terror from that yeah. the second one the second one where you've got like the alien fact obviously you've got the horror and being out alone and you're out in the wilderness or not in the wilderness but like you're out miles away from anyone and the yeah, sort of yeah. distance and realizing yeah you want this peace and quiet but then you realize if anything bad happens <laughs> there is no one around yes so you can just go i'll pop next door <laughs> it's gonna take you about half an hour to get there, and, this is, and I like the fact that that's that's another aspect of the terror in it. Is you sit there and go, yeah, genuinely, this woman has no one around. There is no signal on her phone. There is no yeah. one to hear her scream if they are. Yeah, yeah. And even with the last one, like the last bit with, it supposedly seemed like the girls, the, the girls got away, and you're like, oh yeah, great. And then it's sort of it's not, and he catches up, and the twist of the twist and turn with things like that. It's just so well done because it's such a mix of every horror aspect you can have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the last bit, of course, after yeah. the, the end of the overarching story, where it kind of like he comes into the the, the place with the, with the babysitter. But it's I love what I like about it. The the camera effects are great. The, the the physical effects are really good, apart from the heads in the last bit. They really look kind of. They're slightly the wrong size and they're slightly rubberish. And yeah. That's the only bit in the entire film that I looked at and thought, oh, that's a bit, I'm not sure that works very well. <laughs> no, I I did the same thing. I looked at it and I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I can't. It's like the fact it's not even like, it's all of it. He's literally just the heads because you've got a hand that's on the floor, which yeah. is fine. Yeah. You've got other body parts you see through the whole film, which is fine. It's just there. <laughs> So <laughs> at the end, yeah. And I think Art is the clown as a character is fantastic. He, he, the, 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 the attitude, the characterization is brilliant. It, it, mm. it just works fantastically. I, I know this sounds odd, and maybe you shouldn't say this about a film where people are being sliced apart and frightened to, <laughs> frightened to death, but I really enjoyed watching this film. Yeah. I think what I like about this is. <clears throat> Obviously, as we said before, I like I, I've grown up watching horror films, a lot of slashes like uh, Friday the Thirteenth and uh, uh, like Halloween and Nightmare on Elm Street and stuff like. That. Yeah. And the one reason why I like mainly I like Nightmare on Elm Street. I love it to be because of the fact that Dream State. But the reason why I prefer Halloween and Friday the Thirteenth is because they're silent killers. Yeah. I know they're not, they're doing a talk, talking thing. And this is another one with Artie, is the fact that he is, yeah, he's this clown, and but he makes no noise. Yeah. He's, he's basically this mime aspect of it. And apart I think, from, if, I think apart that, from if every now and again, honking a horn. Yeah. <laughs> which, again, which, the thing is, even that is just terrifying. You've got, like, the like is they showed in the first bit, he makes no noise, doesn't speak, doesn't it? And he just, Sits there, pure silent, and then honks his horn. Yeah, he's going to scare the absolute life out. Of him. <laughs> and I just, I think it's just, so, it's so well done with him. Because they could have done it where he talked, and I think they would have ruined it. Even with the laugh, I think even with laughter, would have ruined it. That's the thing as well is that even when he laughs, it's silent. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. If if, if there'd been any laughter, I think that would have ruined it. But this is yeah. perfect. And so the guys that played him. As much as as, as much as I I, I work as sort of I, I have a bit of a worry of what's in Damien's head with the way because he wrote these. But, but <laughs> yeah. again, like we said about other actors, the fact that they play this so well, and it's terrifying how well yes. they all play these. Oh yeah. And the same, the, 
the guy who plays Artie in this one, it's just the, you see the sort of progression as well with him. It's the fact that the first one is it's it's almost like he's new to it all. Yeah, he's not so demonic. He's not so sort of um, like his outfit is not so sort of rubby and sort of that. But by the last bit, when you see him, yeah, he's this proper demonic face. like looking his 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 outfit's a bit grubby and a bit dirty. You can see it on his gloves, and I like the fact that you can yeah. see that progression. Yeah, definitely. I did. I mean, as I say, I really enjoyed it. I happily sit and watch this again any time. I, I, you know what? The thing is, I have actually watched this before. I, because I, I love I, I love the terrorizer film. I haven't. I I, love... I've seen the first terrorizer terrorizer film, but I haven't seen this one before. Oh, I, 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 I see. The, I've seen bits of this before, and I genuinely said the same thing to Amy when I went upstairs uh, after watching this. I sat there and I said, I've watched this twice now three times maybe and i genuinely don't remember it being as creepy as it was this time when i watched it ran i think because like when i've watched it before when i was younger i wasn't that aware of it yeah. like sort of it but watching it now and i'm like that is i've, I've been in some of them situations especially like sort of babysitting bits or or you sit there late at night and everyone's in bed and you're sitting there by yourself and you hear noises or think you're seeing figures and stuff like that and i'm like i've been in that situation Oh yeah, definitely. and especially as I've got older, like my my, my eyesight is worse. <laughs> oh, like, to the point where, to the point the other day, I freaked myself out because I thought I saw something out of the corner of my eye, and it's only when I actually turned I realised it was my hand. But <laughs> <laughs> but this is the yeah. point: is the fact that as I've got older, you 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 start becoming aware of a lot more, and I think that's what. They, that that is works so well on this film is it's definitely. it's not the kids on this this time, and it's. It's someone that's looking after them, so that she's heightened senses anyway. Yeah, a bit sort of. I want to get out of here. So seeing that, and then, but like, like the comment she says on it, she can't. She's she tries telling them to calm down, and there's nothing wrong with it. And yeah, but she then sits there and goes, "How can I say that if I don't feel that?" Yeah, <laughs> and I just, I, what I like about this is the fact that it's, it's genuine. The, the real things you would go through, you would sit there, and you can't go. It's just, a, it's, it's just, a, it's just a film. Don't worry, don't worry. And you're sitting there going, I can't watch this because it's genuinely terrifying. <laughs> yes, I know, it's, I it's, it's, a, it's almost like a hypocritical thing with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it's, I don't know. I, I, I just find it fantastic. I, I think it's, it's, it's not often we watch a film that I would turn around and say I'd happily sit and watch that again straight after I've watched it. But with this one, I would, I would quite happily have sat and watched it again. This is definitely, though, I think, a friend, because it's, it's quite a new one. Like We've looked at all the other ones, like Nightmare on Elm Street, like I said, yeah. that have all become these big franchises, a big sort of classic. Bit. I can genuinely see this going on and becoming something massive. Oh, yeah, definitely. It, the it, fact that he's on, what, the second film? He's the, on the second Terrorizer film. Second yeah, Terrorizer film. He's only just come third, out. So it, the third film that he's been in as far as yeah. the feature films go. So it's it's... The sort of second we've hit based on him alone, yeah. but the third one in total, I can see this going massively big. Yeah, oh, definitely. because of the fact that it's just so much you can do with it. I, as I say, I, I've seen the first Terrorizer film. I, I want to go and see the second one because I really, I really think it's going to be great to watch. Yeah. Um. So I would, I would say that if you haven't seen this, then you no. really should go watch it because yeah, it's really it's... worth a watch. It's, if, you I would, seen it, if you have seen it, I'd say it's worth re-watching it because it's just yeah. great. And I would say for anyone that's watching this as well, if you haven't watched the first and second Terrorizer film yet, don't until you've watched this film. Yeah. If, if you don't know, if you want to sit and watch them, you need to watch this to to learn where he starts because well, the first and second film it goes on. See, I I watched the first Terrorizer film and I didn't realise there was a film before that until I watched yeah. that. And then I found out about this one, and I thought, "Oh, yeah. we've got to do a review of that." Yeah, exactly. It's, it's the same. The fact that it's it's almost like you're saying, like we said before on other ones, it's almost like starting halfway through a franchise if you're going to watch the first one. Yeah, you've got to watch this one first, even the short one if you're up to it. Like you can find it because of the fact that it's just so well done, and it makes so much more sense. Absolutely, definitely, it's definitely worth a worth a look. So, three good horror films that we've uh, we got there. Um, so uh, three good short. We got uh, three good short films. No, two good short films: uh, Trick or Treat and Happy Halloween, and then uh, All Hallows Eve, which is definitely 
worth watching. Definitely. Um, next time we will be taking a break from the uh, the horror as we've done two weeks in a row. So next week we will be doing uh, all science fiction films. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to guarantee they're going to be good science fiction films, but we're going to be doing all science fiction films. As long as they're not about time travel, I'm okay. No, it's not about time travel. We are doing um, the feature film we're doing is is basically the Magnificent Seven in space. So. Um, Please tell me that's what it's called. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, it's called Battle Beyond the Stars, but it does have it does have one of our old favourites in it. Oh no! It does have it does have? Um, God, I can't remember his name now. What's his name? Uh, he was in he was in Starship Invasions. Well, that was it, Dan. Uh, God, I can't remember his name. What's his name? Robert Vaughan. That's it. Oh dear. Yeah, it's got Robert Vaughan in it. But oh. uh and also the also the uh the, the sun out of the Waltons. So um <laughs> look forward to that, maybe or maybe not. I don't know. Uh thank you very much, Scott, for joining us, uh, joining me and doing this. And all that kind I am you know um, what? I'm I as much as I say this every week, I'm glad I could be here just for the fact that I get to watch not to watch what's um Rose Eve again. Yeah. It's such a great film. Absolutely. Um before we go, I just want to give a quick shout out, uh, especially to all of our American uh listeners and viewers. A quick shout out to uh Nate Thompson, who is um a wonderful bloke and he is at the moment working uh working very hard getting the uh the his haunted town up and running yeah, he, in, even in, with uh, the setbacks that he's had recently yeah, he's had a few quite a few setbacks but he's in he's in michigan he's in uh i can't remember the name of the town what's the town called um give me two seconds and I'll... <laughs> he's in michigan anyway um and he's uh he's Look at go along and have a look at the if you're in the area or you you know you you're nearby or whatever go and have a look at the uh on the town it's it's looks it's like in it. it's in Monroe Michigan Monroe that's it and so, so from what we've seen and what we've heard you need to go and have a look is it to be honest the, the description we could give or even he could give is not doing it justice no <laughs> it, it does it looks fantastic and it looks like it'd be a really good fun time to to go and go sort of thing to go and see and on a more personal note he uh he he is a, a really nice guy uh yes and you know he's 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 very nice and bad to earth and i'm glad that we actually got a chance to have a chat well i didn't have a chat with him because i don't deal with the time i'm glad we got a chance to have a chat with him and get to get have that connection because he's such a great guy. And so like I said, the American people, if they're listening, if you can get to where he is, go and show him some, show him some love. I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Absolutely. And I'm sure you would as well from what I've seen, pictures he's put up and what he's said about what's going on. I wish I could get <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, check him out. Look at look him up on, on Facebook and, and things like that. Uh, Nate Thompson. And uh, we've put links up to his films before. Yeah. So, uh, you know, he's, he's got his own YouTube channel and all that kind of thing. Check his stuff out and check out the uh, the horror town in Munro, Michigan, if you can. Yes. Thank you. So, uh, right. Uh, we will be back next week with um, sci-fi. Yeah. Look like. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for everything and all that kind of thing. And stuff. Bye. Bye. I went to wave with my hands on it. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>